Hello, Dennis. Hi, Lilu. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Everything's lovely in Sedona. Oh, I miss Sedona. I'm now in France and I'm so happy that you've accepted to do this uh, cartology and that you use your skills of uh, uh, Vedic astrology and all of those little tools because next year, as most people that are watching these videos and interviews know that I'm starting the Juicy Living Tour Europe. And so there is some choice to make. Which country am I going to go to? When is it most aligned with the the Earth's changes and the the planets? And I know that you have these tools, and I want to use that as part of my decision making. Okay, great. So I'm excited. How t tell us again? How do you define cartology so that we're all on the same pace? It's actually called astro cartography. Ah, uh, cartography. <laughs> So it's kind of like placing a map um, of your particular birth information uh, on the world. So it can give, like we could say, like energy lines or ley lines of areas that may be more powerful, areas that may be a little bit more challenging. And so we can look at these different aspects and see, uh, again, where not only where your strengths are just generally, but where they will be coming up this spring. Cool. Because I want to okay. start the Juicy Living tour in April. And yeah. uh, when we saw each other last time in Sedona, you were telling me that in May it's pretty good for me in France. So does that, does that change over time or is that still this, the case? No, it's still constant what I told you. Uh, actually, it's interesting because I was looking at the aspects just going on in your chart. And you do have uh, in early April around the 2nd of April, and again, I wouldn't be wedded to that exact date, uh, Jupiter will be trining, uh, or excuse me, aspecting the moon. And the moon rules your ninth house of travel. And it also rules your ninth house of, uh, we could say, dharma, right livelihood. So it should be a good time, I think, in terms of launching the tour. Yay! Same frame that you're looking at? Super. Huh? Is that about the time frame you're looking at? Oh, yes, yes, yes. April. I, I had uh, just, I just said April, you know, uh, as I could have said any other month. So I, I very much feel that my intuition has increased over the years. And the more I'm interviewing people like you and the more I'm following my intuition, the more it's growing. And, and, it's, and it's funny because sometimes I find, you know, like you, we make decisions and then you have the confirmation, uh, interestingly enough, with the planet. So love it so I think that's a good time in terms of launching things or getting ready also making contacts uh, and again it's not that you can't do it now but it just kind of builds as we go towards April uh, we had the planet Jupiter for all of us just go direct on Christmas and so we could say maybe there's been this kind of energy at a horse at the gate that wants to take off for a lot of us and now Jupiter's moving forward through the zodiac and in Vedic astrology, it's moving through in the Aries sign. So it's a sign of pioneering, doing, building, and new directions. So in your particular chart, again, it's aspecting the moon early April. And then as we talked about last time, uh, there's a really nice aspect right around the 1st of May. So the end of April, 1st of May, Jupiter trines uh, the Mercury in your chart. Mercury is a planet of communication, teaching, counseling, consulting, advising. So that will be happening as we move towards the end of April, 1st of May. Mm -hmm. So that timing in April is a good time, I think, to launch things. And you may find as you move through April that it gets stronger and stronger in terms of the energies. Uh, I also just wanted to mention, this is just down the line for you, that Jupiter uh, goes over what's called your descendant, which is connected with relationships. And this happens right around the middle of September. So it can bring, again, important relationship into the life or the deepening if you're currently involved. And this would be, well, it could be on a more personal level as well as career. So I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> That's coming up. And then finally, Jupiter's trining the North Node, which is, again, connected with career energy, very strong, around the first week of October. So you have a lot of Jupiterian energy coming in to um, help us to move things in a more positive direction as we move through 2012. Good. Good. And then can you see where throughout the year, starting in April, is there some countries in Europe where it would be better that I go to? 
Well, it actually starts out early April, and again, uh, this may not be on the on the map at this point for you in terms of, of uh, aspects, but in early April, this line Jupiter, which is Jupiter ascending, which is a very positive line, is going to be starting its transit through Europe. And so let's just say around that time, it would be going through Portugal, Western Spain, and through Ireland. And it'll continue to move through during the month of April. And right around the first end of April, first of May, it goes through the Bordeaux region of France. It's heading into the UK. And it's going through like Barcelona, Spain, and through Mallorca, through that area. So a little bit uh, east of the Bordeaux region as you're heading uh, towards Marseille over the month of uh, May and towards Paris. So we would say again that uh, you have this, it's just on a general level, you have a nice Jupiter line moving through Europe over the next several months starting in April. So again, I don't know what you have planned, but uh, also I did it for like the next three months starting actually around the end of April. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in June, um, this Jupiter line goes right through London, right through Paris, uh, again, just a little bit east of Marseille, and it will be heading into Switzerland and into northern Italy at that time, kind of, uh, we'd say, northwestern Italy. This is around end of May, June 1st. And if you can think of it just like an astrological weather front that's moving through Europe over those months of April, May, and June, and then I actually ran July as well, at that time, this Jupiter line will be going through the Netherlands. Uh, it's also going through, uh, going through Germany, heading towards Munich, heading towards Frankfurt over the month of July, and then going through right through uh, Venice uh, during the end of uh, June, 1st of July, and through the uh, Naples and through, uh, how would we say, the Amalfi Coast. Uh, Positano, Amalfi, Ravello during the first week of July. So, and um, so again, I don't know if any of these areas are on your tour. And again, you don't have to be wedded to these exact dates. Let's just think, think of it in terms of, again, a weather front going through Europe, April, May, June, July, and then it'll head on into uh, Greece as we go more into August, September. Uh, there is some noise. I don't know if you can hear Sorry. it. Can you right. hear properly? Because there's a little yeah. bit of a... Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, there it's better now. Because okay. it was some, it was a strong noise coming in. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very... I'm at the point where right now we're in the beginning of January. And mm -hmm. uh, my intention is to, so to start in April. And I was thinking maybe the UK in April and then in May in France. And then Holland and northern, uh, you know, Scandinavia. There's a lot of people watching from Scandinavia too. So I was thinking in, in summer because of the weather. But everything is totally modulable. It's not like I, I, I very much uh, want to combine what you're saying here, how it feels, of course, checking back inside. Uh, the expos and the congress and the different happenings in Europe also and then the time of the year depending on the weather um, where it would be best so I'm going to put all this into account but it's totally open right now I'm not set for any particular country at a particular time right now what mm -hmm. you said is totally possible I could make it happen that way if if mm -hmm. if um, if what you're saying is that there is it's a more favorable course then while making it practical of course and then yeah. why not combining? I'm all, I'm all about it. I mean, you might as well, you know, have a beautiful glow <laughs> for the tour. An additional and little I, help from the non-physical could be good. <laughs> yeah, I think the point is, too, that uh, common sense is allowed. That, uh, again, yeah. you have to <laughs> match it like to go to that uh, to uh, Sweden and that area, you know, in uh, November. <laughs> you know, would no, not no, be no, a good no. idea. <laughs> So, um, you know, the idea is just to think of it in terms of like a weather front that's moving through. And then again, uh, just for example, we mentioned it may be auspicious to be in Paris to, uh, to, uh, in terms of uh, the Jupiter line going right through Paris right around that first week uh, of June. 
and going right through London right at that time. Mm. And again, if that works out, I would say that's fine. If it's a little earlier than that, it actually can be okay because it's like the, the Jupiter line is moving through there. So we would say, you know, even last week in May, you know, that type of thing could be a great time to be there. And again, depending on the accuracy of the birth time, it also can change this a little bit. So there is a little bit of a challenge, even though your birth time looks pretty accurate. I assume it's from the birth certificate. Yeah. The, yeah. the one 305. I, yeah, 305. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So again, but there can be a little bit slight difference because of the accuracy of the birth time. Mm. Mm. And so what so. does it say also for, do you have August and September, you're saying? Did you run those months or does it say anything? Well, the, the line, uh, I primarily did through, uh, through July, but in August, September, that Jupiter line will move more towards eastern Germany and it'll start to move more into Denmark, into that area. As we go through July and then through August, again, it'll move further. I primarily just ran the lines, uh, you know, uh, through July, mm -hmm. but we also look at the, the lines, you know, uh, towards the end of August, September, that aspect as well. Because it does, as I was mentioning earlier, there's a very potent time right around the mid-September of mid -September in terms of really important people coming into the life, it can be the ripening of a personal relationship, and then as we get towards um, early October, there's some, uh, some aspect around the career that even can more take a, a quantum leap as we move towards the end of 2012. So. Interesting. Well, that's exciting. October, I'm thinking of going back to Hawaii for the Quantum Medicine Congress. Uh, because I did this year interviews with Bruce Lipton and Amit Goswami, and it was awesome. And, and I'll probably go back there at that time. And... Uh, Maybe a little mini U.S. Uh, tour. Maybe I'll stop by Sedona. I love and Sedona. You're so lucky to live there. Right. It's getting yeah. cold, huh? It looks like it's getting cold. Just today, a little wind's coming up, but it's been incredible, incredible weather. Yeah, yeah. So I would say just to, uh, you know, as an overview, just think of this Jupiter line as really helping you uh, through, I would just say through August very strongly. Uh, on into September. Just curious, what time is there's a conference in Hawaii? Did you say or? Yeah, it's the beginning beginning of October. It's the Quantum mm -hmm. uh, Medicine Congress um, happening. I think the first or second week of October. So uh, I will most likely go back there at that time for a week or two. I love Hawaii. I had such a good time this year there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I feel I feel very good about 2012. You know, I don't know from what you're saying to the, the 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 planet and the astro astrology confirms that. But I feel very I feel like supported. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jupiter uh, right now as it's went as it's gone direct at uh, around Christmas is moving through the sixth house, which is the house of health and healing, but also sharing that knowledge and wisdom and people you interview. Um, you know, with your group that you speak to, uh, which sounds like it's really international, which is lovely. Oh, yeah. And then from there, when as Jupiter is asked, uh, transiting through the sixth house of health and healing and well-being, it's aspecting your tenth house of career. And so that's very strong as we move uh, towards mid-May, very strong. And then at that point, it shifts. And it shifts into your seventh house of, again, personal relationships, strength there. Also friendships, making really some strong new friendships as we go through mid-May. So these are some of the things that we're seeing. I'm feeling like it may be better, as I look at this, it may be better to start the tour a little bit more towards mid-April. Or that first, uh, how would we say, towards the, towards the end of April, the first week of May. So again, it may be stronger because that Jupiter line will get more fully into Europe as we move towards the end of April. Mm. I'm totally open. Does it say anything about uh, March? or Because I'm thinking of maybe going uh, Mexico, doing a little trip there or somewhere else uh, around the world. Because April is far away, huh? 
I want to get started. Uh, I want to do little bits and pieces. I'm very attracted to South Africa and to Mexico and to maybe the US or something uh, a little bit outside of Europe for a few weeks. Yeah, what you could always do is give me those dates or timings or that you think about in those particular countries um, and then I can always look those up and we can do uh, oh, you maybe can do a part two of this. <laughs> yeah, so really fine tune. Because it takes me a little while to get the maps up and to analyze them. Oh yeah, I would love to see those maps just to make sure I've got the timing right. Mm -hmm. Can you send those too so that I know where to go when? Yeah. Or we could always, you know, just talk over the phone or if you wanted to do a, a part two of, of this, that would be great. Okay, cool. Thank you, Dennis. All right. This Thank you, Lisa. This is very Lisa. exciting. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited there's all those tools now. And I just should say to your listeners that my specialty is working with the astrology of India as well, uh, which is based on the sidereal zodiac, which is more of a, an astronomer's point of view. So sometimes it's called constellational astrology. And there's about a 23 degree difference between Western astrology and Vedic astrology. So I consider it kind of like getting a, an astrological makeover you know, <laughs> as you look at the Vedic chart. And sometimes people's chart gets, how would you say, much stronger. And you can see these influences that may not show up in the Western astrology chart, as well as challenges that may not show up as well. Did you see so, challenges? Uh, you know, you have Saturn uh, going through the 12th house, which indicates uh, traveling not only to major destinations, but to out-of-the-way places, to unusual places. You're the second person that tells me this this week. Somebody said to me that this year it's most likely that I'll have to go to sacred places, like remote places, like maybe India or Tibet, like to anchor all this uh, within the tour, European tour. Yeah, it's to take people, I think, because of Saturn going through the 12th house and it's exalted or best sign. It's like take, take, taking people a little bit off the beaten path. And of course, people you're interviewing, you know, are already... Uh, off the beaten path. and But it's helping people to walk the mystical path with practical feet. Because Saturn is a planet of pragmatism, practicality as well as uh, has its mystical side. So it's a planet of truth. So it's interesting that it's moving through Libra during this time as we move towards the end of 2012. Mm. But, but in, within that there is a challenge. Uh, I would say the challenge is, is that um, all of us be, that we all need to be willing to face the truth. Ah, even if it's, no. even if it's pain. <laughs> you know, yeah. but again, I would say that also the 12th house, um, you know, because you're so much out in the public and doing these interviews, indicates the need for you to have alone time. So when you unplug <laughs> from your interviews and things, it's like really to, to set aside that alone time. As one of my teachers, Yogananda, says, in, uh, seclusion is the price of greatness. So wow. it's, uh, it's, you know, balancing that outer time with inner time for yeah, you. And it's something that you reminded me when we met in Sedona at the beginning of last year, in 2011, and that's something I've been learning and applying more and more as I was traveling and I could see it now that I'm back in France in a, in a homey environment how this is I, I've learned uh, to just set that time and it's so precious and so good and I, I really see the the value of it and the importance of it it's so precious because then then I'm more out there and ready and able to really be present if I don't then all of a sudden it brings too many challenges for everybody if I don't do that so yeah I really have to make that a priority specific time and that's why I was thinking to set the tour as two weeks out within a month and then going back to France and two weeks back out in a different country and then two weeks back here so that this way it's I have a little bit more of a balance personal and professional and you know whatever I do but then I can balance it out a little bit better no, that makes perfect sense. And anybody that you get involved with during this time needs to be uh, the guardian of your seclusion. 
they need to kind of help you in terms of that, you know, and support you in terms of that need for the inner time. Nice. Uh, the hermit time as you're also balancing that with your worldly activities. Perfect. Ah, thank you, Dennis. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, if you do get involved in a relationship, maybe you have me or someone look at the compatibility between the charts. I am. That's one of my specialties. I am, I am. I, I've uh, met a wonderful man in September uh, mm -hmm. that lives in France. And, um, yeah, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it evolves. I might give you, pop you some dates soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But he's a Pisces, so that's good. Okay. Mar Mar yeah. March, 13th of March. So that's, uh, it feels good. Mm-hmm. That's interesting because that date I gave you, September 13th, is absolutely exact that. Uh, so it's aspecting his son right at that time in his natal chart at the time that it's moving over your descendant point, which is the area of relationship. So that may, uh, how would we say, be a good omen for this relationship blossoming as we move towards the fall even more. Ah. Interesting. Okay, there's definitely a part two and three on this. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Okay, journey well.